Welcome to Bahama Rico. I am your host, Timmy. And before we start recording, Brian did, did, did like a little sinus, a little sinus um, sniff. And if you watch us, you know, we, we listen to a lot of coke rap on this, on this podcast. He's like, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's not a coke sniff. And just so happy the recording started. So that's, that was amazing. Never mind. That was amazing. Not a- Never mind, not a coke sniff, but it's so. I mean, never mind that, but it was also like we've talked about narcos a lot, so I don't want people thinking like <laughs> I, I watched Diego Luna star as <laughs> star as Felix, uh, you know, in, in, in narcos Mexico and just all of a sudden started taking up habits. But to continue the <laughs> intro, I am Brian Fonseca, we are the Bahama Rican boys. Welcome to Bahama Rico, as Timmy said, we are back. With no guests this week because this we just want to go off. This is the week of the NBA season. Yes, sir. And we started about mm, like t- a week into the season, I think. So our podcast is officially, you know, season long. Yeah. Season and, se- and we started in early, uh, November. mid-November, early so we started November. Like week two. Week two of the season. Yeah, yeah. So yes, we've been here the whole time except, yeah. you know, the holidays. And it's so and crazy out of all the seasons. This is the Heat's best season since 2012, 10 years. So. Oh, so you're saying we're good luck? Yeah, man, we saw we saw the best possible time. Like, we didn't join during the waiters, yes, or the blood clot, yes. Now we came in in a legit championship year. Um, and it's so crazy to look back how during the summer, oh, they don't have a backup point guard, they don't have a backup power forward, all of these things, and what a season, COVID injuries. And last night, um, and this recording Sunday, last night, Saturday against the Bulls was the first time for the entire season that every member of the Miami Heat roster, that's the 15 roster spots and the two two ways were fully healthy. It took <laughs> an entire season for the Miami Heat to have a fully healthy roster. Insane. And Can't, you know, that's why Spo, Spo really is, is, is a good, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Since we weren't here at the start of the season, like the start, start, yeah, we, we didn't have a preseason. It. We didn't get preseason. We didn't get, we started literally um second weekend. So we started basically after the Bucks win. Yeah, and we didn't get to predict what we thought. Like, you and I were talking about this, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. like daily, on a daily basis. But we didn't get to predict what we thought was going to happen before the season. So you're not going to see us on some of those five reasons, like predictions pieces, because we weren't here yet. The point is that, Timmy, like, what did you actually think going into the year? Because if I would have told you beforehand, you know where I'm going, but if I would have told you beforehand all these injuries would have happened, whatever the case may be, my and only, the Heat my, still would have been first in the East. You would have been like, get the fuck out of here, yo. Yeah, I Even definitely, during a pandemic. I definitely called home court, for sure. So top, I did not see number one. Because I saw the Bucks or the or the um, Nets would get home court. I mean, number one, sorry. So I remember for sure I said Hero 6 man of the year. And I said home court. That's it. That's literally all I, I um thought about. I thought they'd get 50 wins. 50, 52 wins, something like that. Their over under was, I think, 48 and a half in most. Right. Places. So they, they basically had, they had 50 now. So I would have said 50, 52, which is, it looks like that's where they're going to end up. If they have a chance at what's their 48 wins right now? Or that's 50, 50. Oh, yeah. They 50. got 50. That's right. So as of this recording, it. Came. Pardon, Brian. He was watching wrestling last yeah, night. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had forgotten. <laughs> I caught up to the game, but I had forgotten that was their 50th win and that was a big deal. Sue me. Uh, also, at the time of this recording, uh, this was this is early Sunday. Because right, so we haven't had. We're the not big... gonna record during WrestleMania day two. <laughs> I all right, mean, I, I don't watch those Roman games. Reigns is no. fighting Brock Lesnar. So at the time of this recording, when you hear this Monday morning, no, we will have not seen Heat versus Raptors. So whatever happens there, you know, whatever. Shout out to Larry today is now officially Larry Day. Yes, but we're we're good. We're still gonna get into some Heat stuff, obviously, for a little bit before we get on to some fun stuff. Uh, the Heat are fun, but you know what I'm saying. But yeah, the point is that like. Before the season, 50 to 52 wins is what I expected. They still have a chance to get to 54, 53, whatever the case may be. 50, um, 54 is a max, yeah. I would have thought that they would have been – I think I had them at three. I think I had them as 50 yeah, I had in the three seed. Two or three around there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had uh, – I don't think I had Bucks and Nets. I think I had Bucks and somebody else because I think at that point we already knew – uh, that Kyrie wasn't going to play. Yeah. And I was one of the people like, yo, no, nah, I think he'll sit games. I think he'll sit games. And I thought he was going to sit enough to where they'd fall to like four or something. And they fell a lot further than that. But, you know, regardless, the Heat are about 
a little bit ahead of what I expected wins wise, especially considering health. I thought they'd have some health issues, not as many as not, not they like ended up death. having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to project those things in general. But it's really to say, like, they've overachieved in a lot of different ways. I thought Tyler would have a big year, as we talked about. He's yeah. had a bigger year than I expected. Bam is doing more or less what I expected, except I think he's also been better on the defensive end even than I expected. Even as somebody, masterful, masterful. even as somebody who had him as a defensive player of the year last year, I think he obviously has a strong case this year. For me, it's one of th- these are the three people I'm cool with winning defensive player of the year. Okay, you know who's not on this list, so I don't even have to tell you. <laughs> uh, uh, Bam Adebayo, Marcus Smart, Mikael Bridges. That's that's my that's, that's my, my three. list. That's my three. That's for my sure. list. I that's don't want to hear a case for anybody else. Draymond yeah, that, missed too yeah. much time. That's yeah. That's my three. Like, I don't know how many I games has Draymond Green played. I think he's gonna, maybe gonna maybe miss. He's gonna maybe make forty five. Maybe. Yeah, that's too little. Yeah. That's too little. That's that's just, yeah something like that. Like I I know it's in the forties, right? Like it's not it's not anything it's not anything high because Bam's missed games, but y'all forty two. That's forty two right now. Forty two. Yeah. 42, so yeah. he's gonna hit like forty five. He get yeah, which Look, is he, which, which he, and, that, and you need you need to hit about fifty eight to qualify for any award. Well, Rudy Gobert got Defensive Player of the Year playing fifty seven games or fifty six. Yeah, so. a few years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're gonna do that with Rudy Gobert, Bam, who's better on the defensive end, does more. Like, come on, man. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> if you, you, they gave it to Rudy Gobert and the Jazz were like fourth in the West. And it was over some other guy. I'm forgetting who. Joel Embiid was second in defensive player of the year voting that year. He played 63 games. He missed a bunch of games. He always does, yeah. um, unfortunately. But, yeah. So, right now, where we're, where we're at with he and the NBA in general, to me, we had talked about with the great Greg Sylvander on last week's show. Just basically about, you know, what's but going so, wrong. But it's, it's so crazy. Last week is a very doom and gloom. Oh my goodness! That's what I'm saying. It's like team. last week. It's like last week is like they have their worst week ever. They have these four losses that are just horrendous losses. None of them were good losses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The Philly one was the one that was most excusable because it was on the road. But then everything else, it was just a collapse. And they've really turned it around this past week. Um, again, we did not see the Raptors game. And I, and I think uh, yet, I, I think turning but, around is like a understatement. It's 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 actually right. insane. And this is as we see introducing our segment. It's actually insane how I I count three three very minor tweaks that Spo made completely shift the whole culture. Well, the, not in the team within social media, the whole demeanor of of the fan base. Three small tweaks. And we'll break we break it down one by one. But it's, before it's we get yeah, and before we get into Spo real quick, just here's the quick question. Like, I don't know. Do you feel like? They fixed everything. Do you feel like all is well? I'm not gonna say they fixed totally everything. On the very but they've small answered a lot of questions. Sample size. They've answered. They got a B. You got a B plus on the exam for me. Like all, if, if I, I, I had a, a test of all the problems I saw within the last couple of weeks, I think they got like a B plus, like a very almost A minus. Oh, we're doing grades. Okay, I wasn't prepared <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm missing the, in the mindset. Yeah, I, I think. No, but it makes sense. Yeah. It's just, I, I like the way you did that. Is so we have the Kings first. They blew them out, as expected. But as it, was, it was so crazy how worried we were. <laughs> like a, like, people were like, yo, what if they lose to the Kings? Yanks, was, yeah. <laughs> and then they ended up beating the Celtics, which I saw. You saw me. I put my FanDuel uh, bets up there. I had them money line. I had them covering. And I had them getting the under. And they did all three. So shout out to them. Um, look, I thought that they were going to beat the Celtics. Uh, I think Robert Williams, you know, would have made things tougher. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I hear people say, oh, Tandler didn't play. It don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah, play, play in front of you. Play in front of you. And uh, yeah. while we talk about that, Lord, I'm I'm just, just kind of worried of the surgery. God, he got the weight where um he just did a, a quickly removed the part of the meniscus that was torn, and we know that that means arthritis will be in the future. You know, um, and I I I just hope he's able to. I mean, he got paid already, so I'm just hoping he's able to like enjoy some of his career. Because like I don't I think I don't know if we've ever actually said it, but. You know, I wonder if he always wondered if he had fixed it in college instead of removing part of the meniscus. Maybe he'd have a, a longer career. You know, you, you never know. I don't think that. I don't think that Robert Williams should just shave off whatever the meniscus and then just come back. I don't think that for centers and what we've seen from meniscus is meniscus. Yeah. I don't even know if that's a word. Uh, recently, <laughs> is it this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Ricky. 
Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, all right, we're gonna mark that nine fifty, whatever. Oh, uh, but yeah, I think I think <laughs> I don't know, but like that, he's he's he's. They're saying he could be ready for round two, Six and I'm weeks, like, yeah, and I'm like, that's fine. That's usually what happens. Usually what happens is, is basically you um you cut off, you cut off a piece. It only takes about six weeks. My fear is that you eventually get arthritis in your knees. We saw it with Roy. We saw it with Reed. So mm. I'm just so it's not like a if he is going to get arthritis in his knees. I because think when, Butler had surgery when he had a meniscus in Minnesota. I think he right, had surgery, but but I think he didn't shave it off. He fixed it. That's you know, what so, I'm saying. I think he. Right. I think so he it's two went, ways. Yeah. You cut off the piece, and what happens is that over time, because basically for those who don't know, I'm a, I'm a basketball nerd, so I know. The meniscus is basically what's protecting the two bones from rubbing. And when you take out the meniscus, it means your bones just doing this all the time. And you know, I'm so I hope he's able to enjoy his career. And I understand that the Celtics do have a good shot this year, but I wouldn't have done it if I was Robert Williams. I wouldn't have done it. It's tough because you're looking at if you're the Celtics, and we're gonna get back to the heat in a second because we want to get to Eric Spolster's adjustments. But if you're the Celtics, you're like, all right, round two, you're probably gonna play the Heat or the Bucks. And mm-hmm. not sure you don't want to be 100% for that. But look, that's their choice. And hopefully Robert Williams does get back healthy because he was having yeah. an awesome season. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Um. All right, so Eric Spolster's adjustments. You wanted to get into this one by one. So you could lay out all three and sort of guide us. And we definitely got to talk about this because he did some very subtle things that we've heard. Very subtle. About. So but basically, it's worked, it's worked yeah. so far. So basically, it's starting Struis. Shoes is loose. Um, and even though he had a horrible, I think he before garbage time, even yet, even he was one for seven. Yeah, he ended up being three for eleven. But yes, Duncan is a shooter, and yes, shoes is a shooter, but they are different kinds of shooters. Duncan needs so many off screens, THOs, all of those things. And so it's the domino effect. No Duncan means no reliance on dribble handoffs or bomb, which means bomb did more high posts, bring up the ball type of stuff. Um, and it's just, um, so Duncan sucks at open threes, which is amazing. Like last <laughs> night against the Bulls, Duncan, I watched Duncan miss five wide open kick out triple team threes. Um, so I don't know if teams just recognize true small when he's open, but that's spacing and then and it's the spacing was provided. That to me was, I didn't think that would have such a domino effect. Mm-hmm. Um, but but something shows that Duncan can do was on a early break. Shoes got a a lay a alley oop in traffic and dunk the ball. Duncan isn't doing that. That's one. Another thing Ethan said, and I, I and I saw it pretty much last night. Shoes will go at you if yeah. if he feels you punked him. Last night in the fast break, Duncan would have picked up his rubble and wait for someone to come down. Shoes yeah. went all the way at the rim and got a layup. That's those small things just change the energy of the team, the energy of the start lineup. The next thing, Hero comes in, but not for the shooter, not for shoes. He comes in for Jimmy. Yeah. So and we've always had we had these worries about um you can't play Hero and Shoes or Hero and Duncan because they get murdered on defense. But defense has not really been the problem as of it's been scoring. And the first three players, every time Hero came in, was the bomb. Either a bomb alley oop. So now we see now the future is playing together more. And Chad, the pretty pretty talked about this a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, now you're getting more minutes in the court. So now both Shrews and Hero are playing more with Bam. Playing more with Bam. So that's opened up. Um, Lowry now has a, a more spread floor. Um, it's still because it's still bogged down a bit when it's Jimmy, Lowry, and a shooter. Now it's Lowry and two shooters. Paces up some more and some more scoring. And then the third one, which is we have been we maybe saw it maybe against in the finals. Jimmy comes back in the game, but he comes back for PJ, which means Jimmy is at the four. And I'm yeah. like, Jimmy we're hasn't shooters. had we're shooters. Shooters. Jimmy hasn't had this type of space in <clears throat> since Myers Leonard was the starting center. Mm-hmm. Because I watched Jimmy just pull up, I'm like, but Jimmy is, is able to just rise up in the mid-range. I'm like, this is insane. So you have either uh Gabe or Larry, and we, we also missed Gabe is back, and that was a big, a big thing. Yep. Um, so the, the Depot experiment is over. The Morris experiment is over, at least for now. For now so basically, yeah. Jimmy comes back in the game as a backup power forward with a center, which was a dead man who looked like a dead man for two weeks, had some pep to his step. And so we, we can't really um uh not take credit to the fact that those three games, Deadman didn't play and Morris played instead. Yeah, we lost some games, but maybe it got Deadman a, a, a few a few weeks, not really a few weeks, a few days to get some pep back in the step. So now you have Jimmy, Deadman, Hero, Gabe, 
and whoever else you decide to slide in there. And just those three things, you have a completely different team. And overall, those three small tweaks put Jimmy with space and put Baum with space. So even though, so basically with Spo there, if you put it on a nutshell, and even he said it, he put more space in on the court for his two best players. Yep. My goodness, Spo is amazing. <laughs> yep. And then also the other part of this is just Kyle Lowry making shots. Hey, he said it's time for the real season. Yeah. He said. Pull up threes, uh, pull up mid-range jumpers, threes going left. You know, all the Kyle Lowry things that you brought him to Miami for. He started to showcase that. I wanted to note a few things on your point about spacing. Um, the thing that I do like is the spacing for Jimmy Butler. He's, I remember against Boston, he was first off the bench for Tyler Hero. He comes back in and he's at the four, as you said, coming in for PJ. And he has enough space to where they're leaving him open for three and he's kind of just rising up and being like, all right, fuck it then. I'm just going to shoot. And basically hitting one or two a game. A couple notes on that. A few notes on this, quite frankly. A butler, eight of his last 18 from three. So it was almost Ooh. 50%. Okay? Eight of his last 18 from three. Um, 31% from three on two attempts per game since the All-Star break. That's a 15-game stretch. I think it was you who said maybe a few months ago, that's all you need. Why Yo, because you- here's the thing. like people, the, the, the thing that people shit on Ben Simmons for is not that he sucks at shooting threes and not even just that he was incredibly passive and all these different things. But in terms of the shooting thing that people shit on him for is that he won't even rise up to take mid-range jumpers consistently, let alone three-pointers, because that can open things up when your best you know, teammate is Joel Embiid. So for Jimmy, it's like, all right, him and Bam, neither of them are shooters necessarily. But if Bam's not going to go out there and be the threat, And Jimmy has shown throughout his career, yeah, he can make a three every now and then. He's not awesome from three, but he's had multiple seasons of 35% plus, which Which is is good. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's above average NBA level, right? And it's like, if you can shoot three threes a game and make one per, like some days you'll go two for three, some days you go one for four, some days you go 0 for two, 0 for two. But make people... Just take a step forward and guard you out there a little bit. It'll open up so much more because he'll be able to get to his spots a little bit easier because he can overpower guys or go by them, blow by guys who are bigger and slower, flat footed, find open cutters, whatever the case may be. Like it just opens up so much more. Drive and kick to Lowry, drive and kick to Hero, Duncan, Max, Gabe, et cetera, et cetera. 40 games before the All-Star break, Timmy, on 40 games that Jimmy Butler played before the All-Star break, uh, 40, 41, something along those lines. He was shooting 19% from three. Okay. Um, 12% on the 16 games leading up to the all-star break on two attempts per game. So with the same two attempts per game, he's 31% since then. And was 16 in those, in that month and change or so before the all-star break. So the shooting's gotten a lot better. And for me, it's like, yo, I'm with Jimmy Butler taking three so long as it's like, yo, Take two or three a game. If you make one or two, shit, go to four or five, whatever the case may be. And you're seeing it lately. You're seeing that he's taken two, three, five, three, two, three, five. Like, it's just yeah. consistently there, which is good because, again, that's going to free things up. And that's going to be important in the playoffs, especially if he continues to knock them down because that's the main thing. If you're knocking them down, keep shooting them. If you're not, I would say keep shooting them just, you know, in moderation and not too early in the shot clock, et cetera, et cetera. I want to know one more thing. Max Struess, uh, 11 points per game in these starts, but he's playing 29 minutes a game. And I think um, he's a, well, he lost twice with Struess starting. It's like, I think it's like 13 and 2 or something like that. Yeah, 36% from three, 40% from the field. No free throws yet. Uh, I would like to see him drive more when he gets the ball. But, you know, you got all those other guys there. Like, it's fine. It's not It's not a big deal. The point is that he gives him that flexibility. But ultimately, do you think Max Struess is going to, like, when we start game one of the playoffs, you think he's going to be the starter? Yeah, because it's not going to be Duncan. Um, I, think yeah. Gabe is too, I think Gabe is too small. And Caleb, Caleb is Jimmy. I don't think you. I think the splitting is horrendous if you start Caleb and Jimmy. <laughs> Even though I think a few of each would have been saying um, the the plot to us is going to be Caleb starting. I do not want Caleb now. If Caleb could hit trees, yeah, but um, hmm. yeah, it, it, it has to be shoes. And 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 people think that the a curveball is coming. I think the curveball would be Caleb. 
I don't think it's going to be Tyler because I think they found something with Tyler yeah, coming in Tyler. for Jimmy yeah. and then Jimmy coming in at the four after. I think that's beautiful, yeah. right? I think that Max staying there makes a lot of sense. I think I'm intrigued by Caleb, potentially Gabe, but it depends on yeah, for whom. I'm, I'm I also gonna... don't think it matters that much because it matters the flow of the game later on and who finishes. Like Again, I'm the person who says who, who starts is overrated to me. I care more about who finishes and who plays with whom, et cetera, et cetera. I also think Max Struess is probably not going to play 29 minutes a game as he's done yeah, the past he, he won't. few games. And it's crazy. Duncan might only play like 14 minutes in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, what, end of first – and no, the third, yeah, exactly. And the first and the third, that's it. <laughs> and and that's it. maybe maybe start the second for a few, but you know, but however, if he, it shakes out. if he is unlike last night where he was over five and still played the beginning of the fourth, if he's over five for the end of the third and we're down, I don't think that he, he gets back in the game. Like, it's different last night, there was he's over five and there was a lead, but if you're over five and it's a deficit, I think that's where you just play hero the whole quarter or you let you, this is where shoes is very incredible. Yeah. So I think that's where Duncan doesn't play. If he is not having a good game, he's not going to get a chance to get into rhythm. I think we're good on Heat stuff for yeah, this we're episode. Good. We're good. And now... And it's such, gonna... a, a, such a fitting transition because Heat is winning. Yeah. And the, the, yeah. Other, <laughs> the other wing is going on. Um, your guys know I watch hella shit, hella shit. Yes. Um, as of this recording, there have been four episodes of Winning Time, the um, Showtime doc. Not really talk the show. So for those who don't know, Adam McKay used to be business partners with Will Ferrell. Uh, you should you should know about Telegated, Telegated Nights, all those type of shows they did together. But do you, did you know that they broke up? The Brian, that Will Ferrell yeah. and I, know I was telling they, somebody about this because so, of the, the main role. But so yeah, the you reason, get it. reason why they broke up is that um uh Adam McKay, and I like succession too, so he did succession with Will Ferrell. He really really wanted to be John Bus. Um not John Bus, Dr. Bus. Jerry Bus. Jerry Bus. Jerry Bus. It's confusing because like there's Jerry, John... Jim, Genie. Yeah. There's a Jeffrey Bus, I think, yeah. somewhere. So, like it's, yeah. So of course, if your business partner, let's just say me and Brian, I cast in the show. Brian wants to be the lead character, but I might think that somebody else looks at the character, and I don't tell Brian. So I think what really broke them up is so that he chose John C. O'Reilly over over Will. He didn't tell him. He didn't tell him. And um, to be fair, though, I think I like. I like Will Ferrell, but John is better. John is better for sure. It's not not even just that, but for this role in particular, like Will Ferrell has that reputation of being mad silly, and it's like I think if people were to see Will Ferrell playing this, like they would like it's it's a it's a notion, right? It's like yeah. oh, this is gonna be like a, a like a straight up comedy, yeah, but it's yeah. not. It, I mean, there's obviously there's, there's a document it, yeah. This leans into comedy, but it's kind of like I don't even know if I would call it a dark comedy. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But Winning Times a great series on HBO uh, that we're going to talk about a little bit. So spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! If you have not caught up, if you haven't seen it, we are not going to be talking about the episode that dropped this past Sunday because we are recording this before that. So this is not going to be getting into that. And you, I'm not somebody who watches Winning Time as it happens. I watch it later in the week because you know Sunday night this mad competition, baby. Especially this Sunday night, you got yeah. the national championship, you got WrestleMania Day too. Stone Cold Steve Austin just came back. All right. So I'm I'm with the Grammys. Uh, the Grammys are also tonight, too. I'm a different uh yeah, but you know, I mean at the Grammys, I just sort of go on Twitter, see who won and keep yeah. moving. You know what I mean? Award shows don't really interest me like that, although the Oscars, you know, people talk about that. Um Nas is performing, by the way. Nas is performing? Yes, right. Okay, I'll get a video of that. <laughs> <laughs> You, you see how quickly he uh, uh, oh, last performance. I, 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 but somebody's gonna post it on Twitter. What's yeah. he performing? Um, I don't know, but because he won last year, they booked him to, to perform. Huh? That's, they usually do that. They do like pass winners. Of you last think he'll year. Win, you think he'll win again? By the way, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's only him and him and Jay Cole, so maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll not. We won't end Tyler, but we won't get too deep into Tyler, it because. Yeah. All right, winning time thoughts. What are you like? And before so far? we go, yeah. Um, I I like so like I, said, I watch a lot. Of, I I think I've watched everything Adam McKay has made. Jesus. Amazing, but Magic <laughs> Magic hates it. Ginny hates it. Kareem hates it. So um, the guy who wrote the book that the show is based on. He Jeff Perlman. Three hundred fifty-seven people over a year and a half. Um, so I mean, it might not be one hundred percent accurate, but everything can be fictional. <laughs> You know, everything I mean, and then just last episode, oh, we saw the magic. <laughs> we saw the magic on the court, and we saw the magic with the ladies. 
I mean, we've been seeing that to be fair. This this yeah. dude that I <laughs> <laughs> listen, I'm not gonna make any jokes. All I'm gonna say is that like you know, he went hard in the 80s and felt it in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> they want Which, them to that guy would say, don't go there, don't go there. Yeah, so I I, I didn't know Magic hated it though, which uh, yo, it's yeah, weird. I Magic, wanna, I, Magic, I, Magic, the, uh, Magic also dropped this one thing like two weeks after, and they asked him about it. He said, "Yeah, I'm not watching that shit." You're you're and not so, gonna have you're not gonna have the answer to this, but I'm curious what your thoughts are because I've had this question as I've watched it. Right, the actors themselves, Quincy mm-hmm. Isaiah, who's playing uh, Magic Johnson, uh, Norm Nixon's son is playing Norm Nixon, so yeah, that tells yeah. me Norm Nixon's probably cool with this to some degree. Time out. That's his son? Yeah, Devon Nixon. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. also can he's also the villain in Snowfall this season. Yeah, I looked at yeah, yeah. So my brother oh, who shit. watches I didn't this know. shit. My brother actually told me that's Norm Nixon's son. I looked it up and Devon Nixon's his name. Oh, that's son. that's crazy. Which is interesting because like we've heard like Jerry West doesn't like it as another person. Uh, which we'll get no into. one who, who was actually in it, I guess maybe Norm likes their portrayal. And the that's show. why I'm intrigued by that because I'm like, I wonder why Norm Nixon, but either that or he just told his son, like, yeah, go ahead, do it. He's probably like, yo, if anybody's gonna play me, it's gonna be my, my own son. blood. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. here's my question to me. Here's my question. I'm wondering if you're Quincy Isaiah, if you're any of these actors just playing these roles or whatever, going in knowing. The person you're playing is not gonna like this, and in turn, not like you. I'm wondering, like, do they just not care, and do they just see the well, upside of like, yo, I'm on point, H- I'm on a show on HBO. Who gives a fuck? To Quincy's like, point, he wasn't really an actor. He was a football player who they casted because he looks like Magic, and Rick Fox is the one who like had to teach him basketball and some of this. So, I mean, look, this is your first show ever. Um, this book is long enough to, to last about three or four seasons. Like, this is this this is gonna be his. Babe, his biggest thing is career. So he's like, fuck with Bachi things. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just really a, a, a you know, a recollection. So, so, so it's not a biography, it's not a, a documentary, it's a show. I get why Magic and Kareem and all them dudes and Genie also, I, I get why they don't like it, Jerry West especially. But like, I, I, I don't know. I want to watch more of it because I'm a little like, yo, like, are y'all really all up in arms about this shit? Like, yo, like, loosen up a little bit. But I don't know if I have, I don't have the clout to say that necessarily. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. like, I didn't, I, I want to see it's, the story it's that, on It's that thin line. Like, some of it is, is exaggerated. Some of yeah. it is based on truth. Some of it might be secrets they don't want to get out. Because, like I say, he interviewed 356 people who are around these guys. No, Jeff Perlman is thorough as fuck. So like, I mean, yeah, yeah, his books maybe, are really now. Yeah. Of course, you know the memory is where the mem- we we as humans we remember things to feel they actually happen, but almost four hundred people are not going to remember things that far off from the actual truth. Look, and that book also did really well, right? Yeah. Like that's the other part of it. But um, yeah, I think the actors are great. Um, some of the things that we like that I want to get into. Um, the cutaway scenes, <clears throat> the the very sudden ones. Yeah, yeah, like you need to really oh. be paying attention. And you mean like when they cut away second. with the mouth, but they, like they're still talking, but you can't see their face? I love that. I love it. I love that. I've never. Love I don't it. think I've. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. I love that. <clears throat> I like when mid conversation it'll be like magic talking to whoever. Cookie will say some shit that stuns him. He has a thought real quick. Here's a scene of him eating pussy for the eighth time that we've seen for <laughs> mad times. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then like, talking to his mom and saying, "Yeah, I went to church. I was on my knees. Yeah, you was on your knees, all right." <laughs> Yo, man, this so I, I've seen a titty every episode. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> like this is this is just tremendous. David, have you seen this? By the way, write in the chat if you've seen this. But, um. Or producer David, I, I'm curious to see if he if we're spoiling this for him, but if not, he should be watching it. Over. On the episode, episode one, one. All right, cool. it's not, it's not, yeah. hey, you'll catch up. You'll catch yeah. up. All right. I, I like the last episode with basically um Jack McKinney, the the part, the Blazers assistant coach, mm-hmm. and I liked how spoiler, 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 spoiler. I mean, it's not spoiler because we know how much becomes one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Um. Uh, it was this battle between Norm and Magic, and then and then like he was having a a crisis, like this team just won't get it. He said, fuck it. I'll start both Norman and, and Magic. With Kareem and like, you know. Yo, ahead of his fun. time. Ahead of yeah. his time because like two point guard lineups weren't really a thing. 
Yeah. Uh, we were still very much married to positions at that point. Shit, we even were when you and I were younger, right? Yeah, like, exactly. It, like it was. It, so it, the spoke. I mean, before before the the big three like put Bosch and Senna, um, it was still a resistance for winning teams to stray away from the point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. Yeah, and I also like the Jack McKinney's explanation. Like, you can see the sort of tug and pull. Oh, and he even wants to... and, and how he said there's a flow and that'd be water. Exactly. That was yeah, beautiful. that's yeah, that's where I'm going. Where like the offense and just explaining to people like, yo, we can't just be throwing the ball into the cent uh, to the post to the center, et cetera, et cetera. Triple for like 22 seconds. And this is sort of the fight that we're having now with basketball in a lot of different ways. I think there's a room to score in a lot of different ways or whatever the case may be. But if you're trying to play with pace, yeah, it sucks. And you could see why Kareem had some issues with that that they're going to get into. But I like the way that they set that up. And I want to note something, too. Dr. Buss's uh, financial hurdles, struggles, whatever you want to call them, didn't know that much about them before going So, into yeah, I knew because I, I read the Magic and, and Larry Bird book. So I knew at hmm. that point in the in in history that the league itself was struggling, like Len Bias death. I knew that. So I yes. knew that. Well, Len Bias was after, but yeah, yeah. But I didn't know that him himself had money issues with the team. I know the team, it's the league itself was like broke. Like I knew that much, but yeah. So that was illuminating for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, do you have do you have a favorite scene so far from any of these episodes? One that stand out stood out to you the most. Because mine, mine changes because there's something new every episode where I'm like, yeah. Magic played homeboy before he left and it's like, oh, you were left with a sold. With a soul. I fucked that too. Like, that was so, oh, that was so cool to me. Oh, my God. That was so cool. <laughs> That's a dirty Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Magic's a dirty Mac in this. But you, it's, again, you could... Never mind. I'm just not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Um... I have a few. I have a bunch of different scenes that I like. Uh, I like the. I like when we first get to see Pat Riley for the first time. Yeah, and oh, and I like you know he's a, a basketball junkie and he just wants to get in. Like he just needs to be around the game again. Relatable to me. Um, just the arc is so interesting because like you know you're getting into like some of the seeds. Like oh, I could see why Pat became who he became because of all this shit early on. We haven't even gotten to him being the head coach yet, which we obviously yeah. know is coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a scene that stood out for me was early, very early in episode uh, four, uh, where Dr. Buss uh, has a has a lady friend, restaurant. Um, um, as a father, as I was like, father, I hope I never become this type of person in my life, ever, because that's, see, that's sees, insane. Sees his, uh, I guess, ex-wife uh, with kids, their kids, um, invite him to the table. She's like, nah, fuck out of here, whatever. So eventually they leave, and then he's with his lady friend, and they're talking, and you know, he's basically like, Yeah, that's my ex, whatever. And then, you know, a couple flirty, flirty, flirty exchanges later, he's um kind of fingering her from the that's outside. Then- he's down in there, he's getting in there, she's really feeling it, it's getting intense. HBO, you know what I'm saying? And then they kind of like and snap out of it, it, they look up and little eight-year-old, I guess, Jeannie Buss, or however young she is, just looking at them in shock with her mouth open like this. And uh, she just kind of saw her dad go and to he work. Comes and try to shake her hand, and he had to remember, like, oh, I can't give her this on. And he, I'm like, oh, man. <sighs> yeah. that. <laughs> Look, man, um, Jeannie Buss uh, had evidently an interesting uh, upbringing, as we're <laughs> learning. And, uh, you know, I until I got a little bit older, I thought that she was just somebody that everybody was just fascinated over on Twitter because you've you've seen the genie bus tweets. Yeah, yeah. Motherfuckers be loving them some genie bus. So, yeah, I mean, look, it's a great show. Also, Jerry Tarkanian, didn't know that. I did not. That whole didn't box know that at all. I was like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Can't show it. Back at the car as best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Man. For people who don't know, uh, since we already warned you with spoiler alert, spoiler alert, Jerry Tarkanian, who famously coached the UNLV team's of the uh, early 90s, late 80s. Um, was, was and was that coaching really? UNLV at that time also. He was there the entire time. It was very close. And actually accepted a job offer from the Lakers. Um, and one of his boys got his hit agent, by the mafia. His agent got... His agent yeah. hit by the mafia because they were not pleased about him potentially going to the Lakers. So then he stuck to UNLV. What I didn't know really was... um, Like, I, I obviously knew he was coaching UNLV all that shit. 
actually, when I worked at St. Francis, Brooklyn, one of uh, the assistant coaches there was an assistant on that UNLV staff with Larry Johnson, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, wow. Shout out to Coach Ron. Um, and he told me stories about like that time or whatever. One time we were flying on a plane. It was mad dope. But that's another podcast for another day. Also some Gilbert Arena stories because he worked with the Wizards at that time. And Gilbert Arenas was, whoo, as you would imagine. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I, I, I just didn't know about the Mafia hit which is interesting. And I didn't know that he actually like took the job at one point. I have read that that's a little bit, you know, they didn't get deep, deep, deep into it, but like, yo, you're covering a lot of ground on the show. Yeah. Like, yeah. You kind of have to keep it moving. So this is what it is. All right. Now we're going to play the game with no name, which we have not For the done first in a while. time since yeah. January. For the first time since January. So if you remember the score is two, two, one, David, I don't know if you are, if you're participating, I mean, he has to come on screen anyway, but you got to let us know if you're participating, but the score when we last left it, when we were doing this, is 2 2 1. We haven't played in a while. So, for people who don't remember, it is a game where we have to convince each other a show, a video game, something to watch, a movie, whatever the case may be. You have to convince the other one. And whoever does a better job of convincing the other, they get a point and they get bragging rights and talk shit. And we're going to keep this going because this segment will be sponsored one day. Mark my words. Well, um, as will this show, hopefully, at some point soon. Uh, I think I'm the judge today because we don't have a guest. So that's not you're the judge. That's, that's cool. I mean, if you, you gotta, if you if you if you want to participate, who's gonna judge us? That's the thing. Oh, I could I could I could judge you there. That's fine. Because that that day we get us, I could judge. That's what I mean. Uh-huh. Could do but don't you want but, the scorekeeping is gonna be very bizarre at the end? Of the, I think the scorekeeping needs to become unofficial. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a, there, there's a lot of outliers here. There may be some asterisks. At the we end. could all we could all have one. This is how we can do it. We could all have one each. We could all participate. But who's going to judge? All of us, but you can't vote for yourself. <laughs> it's simple. Because it's somebody, who gets, somebody who, whoever gets two votes wins. Whoever gets what, three what, wins. What, what, what and if everybody gets, gets a tie, it's a fucking tie. That's it. Okay. <laughs> well, you go first then, Mr. Look, Everybody ties goes. are not bad in sports. That's some American bullshit, all right? <laughs> they play soccer overseas everywhere, and they have ties all the time. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Well, we don't you have go first, Mr. Mr. All, all, all for one, one for all. I don't like going first, but fine, whatever. Um, So we're in the middle of Ramadan right now. I'm not a Muslim, all right? I, but, you know, shout out to all my Muslim brothers and sisters. Um whoever celebrates i'm picking a show called rami if you've never heard of this this is a I mean, show you, on you hbo talk, you talk about it enough a show yeah. on hulu excuse me not hbo hulu 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 don't want to fuck that up rami youssef is a comedian egyptian american dude um we often have shows that talk about white experience black experience not that much about the latino experience that's another story for another day we have one from a muslim point of view which is a kind of a dark comedy. I guess you want to call it that. Rami is a comedian, so there are definitely funny-ass parts of every show. Um, the show is based in New Jersey, filmed in Brooklyn. Um, it's hilarious and deep at times. There's a scene where you get really nervous about one of the characters potentially having to jerk off their handicapped friend. Uh, potential spoiler alert, but that's really interesting. Uh, there may be some people trying to overlook a potential incestual relationship, incest, uh, but it's also played off in a very funny way. There's a great episode about what it's like to be a Muslim child post 9-11, post 9-11 in obviously from 2001. Um, so there's a flashback episode that's really good. Among those on the show, Mo Amer, Mia Khalifa, Mia Khalifa, uh, Mahershala Ali, who's great, who has a recurring role on the show. It's not just one and done uh, like Mia Khalifa was, but... Mia Khalifa episode was great. Bella Hadid has been confirmed, which is another reason I picked this. Bella Hadid, a uh, famous model, 50 million Instagram followers or some shit, was confirmed for season three, which is shooting, I think, now and is going to come out hopefully later this year. We'll see. It's a light watch, 30 minutes an episode or 25 on some. Uh, 10, 10 episodes each season, and there's two seasons out now. Season three is going to come soon. But I think it's important, and I think it's timely because you know we're in Ramadan. Uh, we talk about a lot of shows just from an American point of view that don't really uh, include, you know, our Muslim brothers and sisters. And I think that this is one that does a very good job of getting into that. And it's also, again, it's a comedy. It's really fucking funny. It's a really funny show, really well done. And I actually can't wait to rewatch it. I'm going to rewatch it at some point this year before season three comes out. So Rami is my choice. 
Um, so I think I focused before I really got into Vikings season, the first Vikings during the during COVID. History show basically talked about the greatest Vikings of all time early on in their their rise when they used to sail to uh England or whatever. Last week they dropped Vikings Valhalla, which was basically um 100 years after the original Vikings, but still very um drenched in history. The greatest Viking of that era is called Life, Leaf, Life, Leaf, Leaf, whatever. And that's why every time I, I hear Greg say, call himself Lucky Leaf, I'm like, do you have Viking heritage? Um, what's interesting to me about yeah. this season of Vikings is that, um, um, so you know, they, they, they worship the Norse gods like Thor and Odin. This part of it is very interesting because you have some Vikings who were born in England who grew up who believe in Jesus, and you have Vikings who, so they call this, 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 this season is going to be about the, the death of the gods. It shows how. These strong people who grew up with such great beliefs of their gods and with their beliefs, over time, due to you know Christians and the English, their beliefs died. So they call this time the death of the gods because eventually they became Christians and they no longer worship or they, they worship Jesus. And I mean, it's, it's also it's an amazing production. Um, you know, I like sci-fi, I like the fighting. Um, so I mean, if you're looking for a good um, a, if you are like a Game of Thrones fan, if you like medieval times, like King Arthur, that type of stuff. Um, it's perfect for you with the the violence, the you know the and they actually have a black woman. This lady, she they say she a Viking went to Africa and she ended up becoming the queen of Kattegat, which is like the which is like the biggest dock in um, Norway. So yeah, that's my what I've been watching. And if you like that type of stuff, it's better than Game of Thrones. I ain't say it too much times, but I think it's better than Game of Thrones. Interesting. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go completely the other direction from both of you. Okay, Cobra Kai. <laughs> on Netflix, okay. I was trying to think. I was gonna base my selection on what you two kind of went with because I didn't want to fall into something that was even remotely similar. But my wife actually watched Cobra Kai with me and sort of enjoyed it. So it's good for anybody to watch that maybe remembers the original Karate Kid. It's very campy. The acting is terrible. It's cheesy. <laughs> the fight scenes are are like hilarious. it's like comedy fight scenes. It's like. It, it's so predictable and like campy and but the thing about it is is like they have the flashbacks to the original karate kid with mr miyagi and with daniel's son and uh, obviously the old cobra kai with uh if you don't know did you guys watch the original karate kids like the old yeah but i can't movies? i can't remember so i wanted to watch it first and then watch yeah the it was guy. a long it was a long time ago yeah like the, you know i'm older than you guys obviously it seems like now by a lot but <laughs> Basically, you know, uh, Ralph Macho was a karate kid, and now 30 years later, he's become very successful. And the main antagonist, his rival in the original karate kid, uh, Johnny Lawrence, is kind of the opposite. He's down and out, downtrodden, really, you know, hard luck guy. Like his life kind of went to shit. And he started, he resurrected Cobra Kai, the dojo, to sort of recapture some of his 80s glory because he was at that. The problem with him is he peaked too early. So like he's been miserable for all this time and it, it's just, a, it's an easy show. Kind of like Rami, it sounds like, you know, 30 minutes, you, you watch it quick, you kind of binge watch it and, and it's pretty funny. You know, it, it's just a funny, you know, lighthearted show with, uh, you know, with some decent action. But, you know, I think a lot of people my age will like the nostalgia factor of that. For people that maybe never saw the original Karate Kids, you'd have to go back and watch the movies first to really appreciate it. But it can also kind of unearth some of those great 80s movies that, that I grew up on that uh, maybe a lot of people haven't seen. So, you know, that's going to be my pick, a nice easy one, Cobra Kai. So I was going to go with Rami, but I have a thing for 80s movies, so I got to go with Cobra Kai. <laughs> Thank you. That, you know what's that, crazy is like I tip. <laughs> but like that now, how can I not vote for Timmy now that he voted for me? Like I feel bad if I don't. Oh, this is the flaw of the show. This is the flaw. <laughs> like I tried to watch Vikings for like five minutes and I like I, I just couldn't. I don't know what happened. You know, yeah, like, I mean, like the thing is, I'm not typically against the Vikings, but Timmy kind of sold me a little bit because I have heard about Cobra Kai a lot, and I don't even know what the fuck the shit is that Timmy mentioned. But like, I feel like I could get into that a little bit. Uh, uh well, easier. I don't know. I. I it's just tough because, like, I'm not really into either genre like that. <laughs> like that. Um, hmm. 
Just pick Vikings. Yeah, I'll do it to keep it interesting. David, you have the deciding vote now. You could give us a tie or you could uh Yo, it's Ramadan. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just trying I'm just trying to rep for the homies. I like it as something that I probably wouldn't typically watch, and it seems like you you presented it really well. But I tried to watch Vikings, and I think Timmy kind of maybe opened my eyes to give it a second look. So, uh, oh for fuck's sakes, I'm gonna hand Timmy his W this week. I gotta, I gotta do it, man. I gotta. It's fucking Ramadan. He voted for me. It's compromise. You can't even get a vote on fucking right now. Nope. I'm talking like I'm a Muslim. I'm not, but you know. I'm just... and, and sorry. This is the Brian's camera to start to go out of focus. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm going to leave now. I feel <laughs> terrible. So before we get out of focus. here, while Brian's camera is trying to refocus itself. I'm back. The so next episode you will see from us would be after the NBA season, the day yes. after, yes, and we'll be L I V E. Yes, no Monday morning stream. No, it will Monday be night. live Monday night. Comments, questions, concerns, and special, guests. special guests. Two guests. One is confirmed. We won't one is, say who. one is one is deciding. I guess one is what well, we haven't asked the other. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> we're we're gonna do that though to try to do it. Um, it'll be two people. Uh, and so, you know, like. a, a bit of break. The season will be over. The play-in will still will never start yet. It'll be a, a legit, like, just a reset of the season over. Yep. Now it's time to focus on the real season. Oh, yep. I, I've got to put my little, my little bit of peace. As of this, as of this, this recording dropping, there will be three more Miami Heat games left. Versus the Hornets on Tuesday. Versus the Hawks on Friday. Versus the Magic on Sunday. I'll be at the Hornets game. And I'll be at the Magic game. So, you know, I hope I bring us some good luck. Because I'll kill the number one seed. There you go. So remember, Monday night, it's going to be 8 or 9 p.m. We're still, we're going to work that out. Based prime on, time stuff, you know. Based on what works uh, with our guests and the network and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. And then the week after, you know, we'll already be talking about playoffs because we'll be in the midst of the playoffs. We're going to figure that out as well. But, Timmy, take us home. for This the has week. been Bahama Rico, the preview of the last week of the season. Thank you guys for being here. So I'm happy to say that you've been here for a full season. We look forward to being here so much more. So much more to come. Soon get some sponsors. And I am Tim A. And I'm Brian Fonseca. We'll be back next week. Timmy's up 3-2-1 on the game with no name.